take two. So we actually, fun fact, we, we tried to record earlier, but uh, it recorded in slow mo. So yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so not sure what questions we answered or not. So uh, might might forever be a secret if we if, if I don't ask them again. But uh, well, maybe you can put it in like super speed mode. Oh I, yeah, I can do that on the software. I can put yeah. it in the super speed mode. That's right. All right, so we'll, we'll just uh, we'll go back. So. Tell us, tell us about your uh, tennis background, Enzo. Yeah, so basically I started playing when I was five, like, I was with my dad in a, or in a park near our house and we were kind of just hitting against the wall and then after a while I guess I started to like it and then I started getting some, like, lessons, like, we call it, like, hot shots in Australia, like, with the, like, green and red balls, so started getting lessons at a local club and then the coach said like I should play some tournaments so I did and I lost 0-0 my first match but I still was like happy to be playing for some reason my mom was like kind of confused <laughs> and I guess that's where I started to like really love tennis I guess just competing yeah. that's really cool so so uh, so you just said this but what age did you say you played your first tournament I think I was probably eight, eight years old. Eight, yeah. gotcha. Um, so, when would you? So, would you say you started playing like competitively at eight, or were you just playing like kind of like local tournaments and stuff? No, I was, I was just playing for fun when I was eight. I'd say I started playing competitively when I was maybe like ten or eleven, because there was this thing in Melbourne, well, in Australia, there was this thing called Super Tens, and like they would kind of be like the best 10 year olds like in your state would come like every Sunday and you'd be like in teams like Team Feder or Team Nadal, Team Djokovic or whatever. Gotcha. And you kind of all got the same clothes like outfit and you'd have like hey. six, six guys on the team. And yeah, I played that when I was nine and ten. The first time I was like number five on the team and then the second time I was number one on the team. So it's like pretty cool like playing against the best kids in your state like every Sunday is, is a pretty good event. That's really cool. So at that age, like 10, 11, um, were you like focused on getting better at that age or were you just out there like playing for fun like in your practices and stuff? Yeah, I was, I was kind of just playing for fun like I didn't, I mean that was like a ranking system and stuff but I just like love playing tournaments. That's, that's the only thing I was like really focused on I think just playing tournaments and trying to win tournaments. Gotcha. Did uh, so like did you care about the rankings at all? Did that motivate you or was it just uh, like you just like enjoyed just playing matches? Yeah, I think I was more excited about playing matches. Like it was cool to like be ranked and stuff in the state and the country but I don't know, I just I just like the matches more well, just Gotcha. Just not doing any school on the holidays <laughs> just playing tennis. So like winning and losing wasn't really like the motivator is more just like um, actually playing or yeah I'd, I'd say actually playing but i mean i got pretty pissed when i was losing so <laughs> it must have been some sort of effect but. gotcha cool 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 so um at, at what age did you uh i guess did you start like being really like pur purposeful in your training or was it always just going out there to have fun and play tennis or did you have like some kind of goal each practice or something or? yeah I, I only started like having goals in practice i'd say i probably started this when i was like 16 or 17 when i was like preparing to play some like uh, itf junior tournaments gotcha but before that i was i, I was just hitting balls <laughs> gotcha so when like so what, how, how exactly would you define like a purposeful practice back then like what was going on like in your mind um like what, what was your purpose i guess well when i was younger like my main like focuses with my coach was like just technique because like i was like just like hitting the ball and stuff so my technique was kind of like wonky and stuff especially the ground strikes so i don't know most of the focus was just like on some technical aspect of my game for the most part just like cleaning up like extension or like turn on the backhand or something like that. Gotcha. And would you say it was like pretty much like all your coaches that changed your technique or did, would you like go in and look at like videos yourself or something or like? I'd say I only started like 
focusing on technique myself when I was probably like maybe 18 but yeah for the most part it was just like my coach seeing something that like could be better like just focusing on that. Okay gotcha because like that's that's one thing I've noticed in my own game like I'll see videos I'm like my technique does not look good at all <laughs> um, and I don't really have any personal coaches or anything so the only way I can think of like changing it as if I review like some tape of myself mm -hmm. I don't know I guess if you had like any suggestions which which includes like getting a to coach or whatever yeah. Oops. like how, how, how would you recommend like correcting technique yeah because a lot of times things can like feel like the right technique right but it might not necessarily yeah I feel like everyone has like their own technique and style so like I wouldn't be too worried if it like looks weird as long as like you can hit the spots you want to hit like consistently without getting injured I feel like because you see guys on the tour like Napa Dev and stuff they have weird technique but he doesn't miss a ball with this technique so like gotcha. it's kind of just like getting like in all like the right spots like contact point like finish I think that's the most important thing like so I'd say like you could like look at some players who like maybe have a sort of similar game style or wanna like play similarly to and see like how they're striking the ball and then kind of see like what positions like your body and racket are getting into and kind of like gotcha. kind of work on that a bit. But, yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna go. So I know you're playing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're playing number two for Alabama and yeah, you yeah, you're, two. you won ITA regionals this year yeah, yeah, and last, yeah. you were ranked as high as like top 30 in the country for yeah, NCAAs. Like 35. Yeah. 35? Yeah. Gee, that's crazy. Dropped off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's pretty good though. Yeah. Um, so how, uh, how would you describe your training at the University of Alabama? I mean, it's pretty rigorous like with school, like it's like the weeks are like by the end of the week you're pretty tired you just want to sleep a lot but um well every day we we have a like a tennis training and like a fitness component as well i say during the fall it's probably easier to describe because like there's less like traveling and matches but in the fall like every day we would like have a have a training session and then in the afternoon, like after the training session, we would have uh, like either weights, conditioning, like sometimes it would be like a track day, we would like run on the track, do some like interval sort of work, or some like on-court movement, but we would like lift like I'd say two to three times a week, and then conditioning maybe once, and then uh, movement twice, and then one day we would have yoga, I think. Gotcha. That's really yeah. cool. Um, so, in the uh, how would you describe like a, a tennis practice? Um, well, I mean, we would start just with like a like, usually like five ten minute warm up, like just like middle crosses and volleys and smashes and stuff. Sometimes we would have like an extended warm up if we we're gonna usually do like match play straight away. Then we would do serves, but we'd do that and then. Usually on the days where there'd be a lot of drilling, we'd just start getting into drills. Like usually it'd be live ball stuff, like maybe like three cross, one line, two cross, one line, something like that. And then I'd say we we started like mix in some like fat ball stuff as well. And then usually towards the end of practice, more like open like point play sort of things. But still like there would still usually be like some sort of like condition around the game or something like I know for example like uh, like I know if you if you want a point like coming to the net you get an extra point or something like that like some some conditioning that would like in, like enforce you like reinforce you to like do do that thing or, like, something like that but usually like we'd only play like open points like like a few times a week I'd say okay gotcha that's cool. Yeah. So how would like, so how how would you describe like your mindset in these practices? Like, uh, 
do you do you go into practices with like a purpose or do you kind of like wing it or uh it's okay to like or it's okay to say you just like do whatever like the coaches say or whatever yeah. um but i don't know it just it's just nice to pick the brain of somebody who's doing so well in college tennis and now in futures the, the pro circuit <laughs> nah, usually at the like before practice usually i have like two or three things that i'm like really focused on doing but sometimes it's like I can have this focus and then maybe like the the drills we're doing and stuff like I can't really work on that so I, I'm trying to be a bit more flexible like this like trying to make the things like kind of like more like specific to me but they can be in like different situations so usually I have a like a, a focus on each of the sessions I'd say yeah gotcha cool and then um is there anything you do outside of like your organized practice, weights, conditioning, uh, yoga, um, or what do you say you just like mm. do whatever schedule? Nah, usually I, of course I do the schedule, but I, I have to stretch a lot because like, my, I don't know, for some reason like my muscles and joints, they get like pretty tight and since we're yeah, we're going up here. But since we're, um, like, the training load is pretty big, and before college, like, I really max I train was, like, maybe 12 hours a week, like, so pretty, like, light. Um, so, like, yeah, the, the, the load is, like, pretty big, so, like, my... I don't know, and I, I, I've never been, like, super flexible, so I'd say, like, I try stretch a lot after, and maybe, like, try getting, like, a surf practice once or twice a week, but... That just depends, like how tired my shoulders are. I guess. Gotcha. <laughs> what would uh, what do you think separates like the top 100 college players from like the rest of them? Mm. Um, or is there anything that separates from them? Or like, yeah, good question. I'd say all the the better college guys who are like qualifying for NCAs and stuff. I'd say their games are probably a bit bigger like usually they're playing like higher on the lineup and they're just like they have like bigger weapons so they're more able to like like get on top of you quickly they kind of give you like less of a chance as some guys who maybe play lower or play a bit more defensive like they're just when those like two match up like over like let's say 10 matches the guy who's like usually playing bigger and more aggressive like he might lose some but he'll probably win most of them so I'd say the top guys for sure have like always big serve big forehand and most of them like, have pretty good volleys from doubles as well so I'd say that's a big part um, and I'd say the guys at the top they're probably looking to go pro as well already like have a decent pro ranking so I'd say like they already have this like mindset of like where they want to be after college and maybe some guys don't have that mindset on or maybe haven't thought that far ahead yet and like that's fine but I guess yeah I guess the, the guys at the top they're, they're pretty clear on like uh, like how they have to play like what like what they need to do to get better so I feel like yeah that's pretty cool changing the subject here again um but when in your tennis career do, career do you think you made like the most improvement or do you think it's kind of just been like like kind of like a constant growth thing or do you think it's yeah. kind of like was there like a certain year where you think you just really improved or? uh i don't know for me like i've always been like decent but i never i'd say my growth was like kind of like like how my body grows like I'm kind of like like mostly like uphill but like pretty like slow and gradual like I like I was always like like kind of highly ranked in the country and state but like I wasn't really anything that special so I'd say like the the, the growth has probably been like more more over time but there was a period where like 
like I was training a lot and like I had like some decent results like I, I made the final of 16's nationals kind of like I was like an unseated guy and that was a bit of a surprise for me and then in my last year of juniors I managed to win like two two ITFs at the start of the year before COVID started so I guess that was probably when I kind of made like my first like sort of like jump I guess because before that I, I was like pretty pretty constant like, like improving but nothing like ridiculous like just a solid play I guess. Gotcha. So what's the uh, what's the big secret to improvement? Or is it a secret? Uh, I don't know. I feel like there's not really a secret. You kind of do. You kind of have to do a bit like. I feel like it's got a lot to do with like your routines, and I guess everyone has a different routine. But whatever like works for you with like nutrition, sleep, like how you how you play the game. Like everyone has like a different way of. Of like improving something, so I feel like if you can find like the best way that works for you, like the best balance, I feel like that's good. But I feel like over time, like you kind of just have to. Of course, you can't be perfect, but you kind of just have to like perfect like the little things, like each day, and kind of you kind of have to like you kind of have to know that like the improvements that you like want to make they, they're probably not going to happen straight away like it takes a lot of time to just like change a habit or change like something or improve like, a little thing so I'd say like you have to be willing to like put in a lot of work without getting much of a result back I feel like in today's culture as well like we always want like things like instantly to happen but I feel like yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, like the stuff you work on like today you might only see the improvements like in a few months and like it's kind of annoying that it's like that but you have to realize like like the, the work will eventually pay off if you're doing it the right way like even though it, it's probably not going to be in like the near future like totally. I'd say that the work pays off usually over a long period of time. Such a great point so you kind of just got to develop good habits and routines and yeah not not expect to see results immediately but just keep pounding that stone and trust the training yeah until finally that stone breaks and you see where, <laughs> yeah. where all that training went yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool because like it's it's really hard to hard to see like your development on a day to day basis. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's like a, like I feel like yeah, you only see like the improvement when like you like sort of like play a match and like maybe you you played someone before that you had like a worse result and you kind of like see that you're like able to get on top of them a bit more easily or just like. I don't know, just a few things in your game that just like seem a bit clearer, I feel like that's when you can start to see the improvement. Gotcha, that's big time. Um, so, you've probably already pretty much covered this, but what would you, what would be your biggest recommendation to anyone who wants to get better at tennis? biggest recommendation is just like first of all you kind of just you have to like even though you're doing a lot of work for something like you still have to enjoy it like even even when you like maybe some days you don't enjoy it but for the most part like you should still enjoy it because otherwise like if you're just doing something like just for the sake of it and you're not really like having fun as well like I don't there's not much point to it like like yeah I'd say I'd say like 
you still gotta you still gotta like have like a bit of love for the sport. I feel like that's like really important because I feel like most guys like who burn out they just kinda like they're just like doing too much without like really enjoying what they're doing so I feel like like just like in it just, just just enjoying like little things in the sport I feel like that can be a lot a lot of help. Since, uh, yeah, since tennis is like such a mental sport, like if you have like some enjoyment out of it like you you'll be able to play like your whole life basically. So Gotcha. I that was like, that was beautifully said. And that would be the perfect conclusion, but I still want to ask a couple more questions. Okay, yeah. Okay. So this uh, this past week, you played your first futures ever. Yeah. <laughs> got through qualifying, got an ATP point, and then almost took out the number one seat. Yeah. I'm curious, like, what your what your mindset was like throughout throughout all these matches. Like, mm. do you have certain routines? Do you have something you're like thinking about? Like, uh, how do you adjust when like things aren't feeling right? Uh, mm. It's a whole lot in once. I guess just kind of kind of talk about your whole mindset um, when you're playing big tournaments like these. Yeah, I don't know. Well, for me, like, it was kind of like a last minute thing because I entered Futures before and just missed out. So it was like a surprise to see myself in the draw. So I guess when I saw myself, I was just like so excited just to play the tournament. So I think that was kind of like my first thought. But then like once I got close to the match like I was getting like like my first college match I was getting like super nervous and like <laughs> so all I all I was thinking was like about this like ITF point like and just like trying to win a match um, but yeah I, I feel like that, that was what was on my mind the most because I knew like it was like an opportunity that like might not come by like too often so I was like just I know, just really focus, like, usually, like, I know, in my past college matches, like, mentally, I haven't been that great, but, like, I was trying to focus on just, like, I know, not complaining too much, and, like, yeah, just mentally staying, like, solid, because, like, I hadn't hit it all on clay before the tournament, so I knew, like, that, like, I wasn't really gonna play anything, like, any special tennis, so I feel like, I kind of knew that, like, things weren't gonna go great, so I was just, like, trying to be okay with that, yeah. Gotcha. So, you mentioned that you were, like, nervous, since you are thinking, of, and you're also thinking about, like, uh, out, outer things, like ITF points and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, were you thinking about that while you were playing the match, or did you have some kind of ways to, like, filter that out and focus uh, on the ball or something? Or? When, when I was in the match, like, it kind of went away, but when I was losing, sometimes I was thinking like, oh shit, like, you know, there's there's things on the line here. <laughs> but I don't know, I, when like my mind like goes to these places, like I try to focus on like grunting a lot, just like, I don't know, just drown out the noise in my mind because I think a lot, so. Gotcha. Yeah, just trying to grunt, focus on that, and just like, I don't know, just like give myself some like, positive reinforcement, positive body language after some points. Just like focus focus on the ball a bit, not not too much on my thoughts, which is like pretty hard but yeah, just just trying to focus on like just some like mental routines just so I could like play and not not think too much. That is perfect. Well thank you for uh, joining me on this outside the cubicle first ever interview today <laughs> and congrats on your first ATP point entering the pro tour. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. If, uh, so if anyone else has some questions for Enzo, uh, let me know in the comment section. <laughs> Maybe I can shoot him a WhatsApp message. <laughs> and uh, I know he's a busy guy. He's going to be training hard this summer for his, uh, are you entering your junior year? Yeah, junior year. Junior year old, of college man, tennis. Basically. That's right, and you got some future, more futures coming up this summer. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions on how to become a high-level college player, or a pro player, or just a better player, um, shoot a message, and may, maybe uh, maybe I can get some some word from Enzo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, so uh, guys. like and subscribe. Yeah, roll tide, baby, roll tide. Roll tide, <laughs> baby.